Hi, this is Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to draw a letter and have it look nice and sort of inky and nice and printed instead of having it look computerized and harsh. Okay, so as my model, I have I have a sort of a cut down version of the Centaur type. This is from Bruce Rogers. Uh, the Centaur type was originally 1914. And so let me show you what I'm doing. I'm holding down control because that makes it in the curves. And then I'm going to put another control point here just to help control that one. Here I want to have a node there and here. And then some this one to give it that straight look, somewhat straight. And then I'm going to put it's easier at the beginning to just put sharp nodes at the tips here. There, my drawing got cut off a tiny bit. Okay, then this that point I might take off later on. And then I'm going to use sharp nodes at the top. And you'll see we're going to change those to curves a little bit later. Okay, so now we have that. So notice that what I did is I started from this side and I went counterclockwise. So that's the way we go. When I'm doing the inside, I'm going to put these to all rounds. And I want to do this actually the other way from this one. I'm going to put sharp nose on the top. I'm going to do clockwise because that's going to make it white. Okay, that got a little bit weird right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to now clean this up a bit. This one needs a point right here to help us control that. Um, another thing that you, oops, another thing that you have to think about is following the rules. So that means that if I extend this, you don't want it crossing like that. You want to try to get it where it's not crossing. So that either means moving this one to that way or the other way. It might be crossing over here. When you're using this technique, it's not going to quite follow the rules as much like that. That does have some consequences that it may not quite be as good for things like TTF conversion. So if you're going to be, this is mostly for print. If you're going to be mainly making like WAF ones, then this may not be what you want to go for. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm extending these. I made this smaller here, and I'm extending these out. And you can sort of see what we have so far. Okay, I this, this to me is just too much. I don't like how that's dipping in there. So we'll sort of make it like that. This is going to be a slight inflection on that area. And inflection, what I mean is like an S-curve where... It's going counterclockwise one direction, and then it switches to switching to, or I said clockwise, and then it switches to counterclockwise. So those those things are called inflections. Usually you want to try to have the least amount of those as possible, and you want to put nodes where the inflection happens. With this orange thing here, you can tell where you have an inflection because it goes sort of like this. You see where the, oh, that that, that one doesn't do it. Here the inflection is so slight, I don't think the orange is going to show us. But basically it's on this side, the curve is on one side, and then it goes to the other side a little bit later. Okay, moving this a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this up a little bit more. So I'm just adjusting these. Another thing we can do is just do a global harmonize. Okay, I sort of use, I'm using a custom shortcut because that's what I like to do when I'm drawing. And I've I've designed my custom shortcut so everything fits on the left hand so I don't have to push anything with the right. If I want to put, if there's anything, shortcuts that have to use the right hand, I actually put those, I have a gamer's mouse and I put everything onto those. I've been using a gamer's mouse with professional software for a long time since uh i don't know for at least the last six years i used to use a i used to use a gamer keyboard but i found that that wasn't practical because you have to have one hand on the mouse anyway so that hand is taken so it's not going to be helpful 
Okay, see on this one, we had a little bit of separation there, so that was not good, so I got rid of that. Here we have this curvature like that. We can get rid of that by uh, doing a couple things, trying to slide him out and then trying to adjust him. Okay, so one, one trick that I learned when I was making this style is that I with dia diagonal nodes are sort of a problem once you get multiple masters. Now this one I'm not planning on having a multi as a multiple master font, but I'm going to eventually be doing it. So what I like to do with that is to make my diagonals as close as possible to have it look smooth, but have it in the center. And the way you do that is you hold down option like I'm doing, and then you sort of shimmy it around until this curve. See, that's bad. That's a lot better. Something like that. Okay. I am drawing with everything rounding. You can get that looking better if you draw without rounding. Oops. I'm pushing the wrong key here. I want to be pushing option. Okay, well, that's one way you can... I, that was not what I was intending to do, but that is also one way because in order to have option... Okay, so there's two ways of using option. If you have... Let me take that off again. If you hold down option and then you pull something out of here, that will pull out a node when there's no node there already. Okay, another thing you can do is if you click on this, you start moving it. Now I hold down Option. See, I can move this, but it's keeping that handle. I, I don't have enough mouse cursors to point there, but you see the yellow handle down downwards there? That is staying in the same place. So that's really helpful when you have that like that. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, I did it actually wrong on that one. Hold down Option, then pull it out. Okay, now I'm not doing it. Well, I'll go to my other shortcut, which is to add curves. Okay, so let's see where we are now. A lot of times I like to draw, let me put out my preview panel. There we go. Okay, so let's put an A there. So you can see what we have so far. Let's put it on fit. That gives it the biggest. So it's a, lot of, it's a good idea to look and see what your letter is looking like as you are going because sometimes it's hard when you're just zoomed in here. It's hard to tell what is going on. And I have the node panel up here, which is obscuring that. So we'll take some of these out. Okay, this one, sometimes I like to just, even when this is actually going to be curved, I like to have these here. On this one at the top, we do have to have a node up there. And that is because, so that way, when we put the hints down like this, that way it's going to get moved down with the zone. Okay, so that's... Or we can take that off for now. Okay. But on ones like this, it's actually not all the way necessary. And sometimes I like to just have the nodes as sharp like this, but not to look sharp, to just have them as sharp. But that way you can get this sort of nice curve without having to do too much. If you want to be putting nodes up here, then you have to export a font with fractions because it's going to get all messed up if you just have it round to integers like we're doing right now. Okay, this one I'm going to add to the tip. Okay. So something like that. You can see, look at the difference of the sides here. You see how this looks more computerized and just like that. This one looks more rounded. It, I might have done too much of a tip. If you put these out too much, it can also look sort of computerized. Another thing is notice what I'm doing on the end of the tip is that I'm making it slanted. I'm not making it just at right angles. That also gives it more interest. Even when you put a tip on, it's going to make it feel like it's going in that direction. Now, I have a later step. I'm going to balance these right now just so you can get an idea of the finished product. But usually I would save this for another step where I balance all the serifs between all every font. Uh, here we also have some issues where that's looking thicker just because of the way that this is going here. So, oops. I always have the tunny lines on if you want to turn that off. That's these lines in between, but then some, I accidentally dragged it there. If you want to turn those off, then, then hit L. I think you hit that twice. Okay, so I'm going to smooth that. I'm just using my custom shortcut for smooth. Oop. Sometimes I use another program, so then I forget which shortcuts the to move over when I'm zoomed in. Okay, uh, I use Sibelius music notation when I'm doing that.
but yeah, as far as using programs for fonts, I've gotten to the, I've gotten the point where I just want to use just font lab for everything. I think it's a lot easier to use one program and all the features are there. The more you're switching around between programs, the more time you're wasting. I had, I once had a, when I was in music school, I had a professor who said, you have to draw, you have to write everything out, all your music you have to write out on page before you put it into the computer. And I think that's just BS. You don't need to do that. That's a waste of time. He's spending extra time doing those steps instead of making new things. I do sketches. I like to do sketches on paper, but I'm not going to do actual like drafts or something on paper like Frutiger, his sort of drafts where it's all perfect and everything. No, that's not, that's not necessary. That's a wasted time because on computer, you can just get that thing in, make your computer your draft and then just edit it and it's already ready to go. Matthew Carter now, I was reading something and Matthew Carter now does everything directly into the computer. He doesn't use paper like that anymore. So I just think that for today's age, it's not necessary to create extra steps for yourself. You can just stick it into the computer if you want. Okay, so that's a basic example of to do the A. In the next one, I'm gonna, I was gonna do like five letters, but since I'm talking, it's taking me a lot longer than normal. So I might just do three or so. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.